even with one or both of the kids. But the drive there and back is a different story. You see, Isaiah always seems to wait for the car ride to the grocery store to ask me tough questions. Now, some days the questions just try my knowledge of mechanical things, like, how does that water tower work? Um. <laughs> However, other days begin like this. Mom, why did God create flowers just so they die? What? He likes to think very deep thoughts and ask very tough questions on the way to the grocery store. It's a deep thought and a tough question asked in the gospel today. Who do people say that I am? Actually, what Jesus asks is a much broader question. He doesn't start with the I question. He starts with the all question. The question he actually asks is, who do humans say the son of humanity is? What? That makes no sense. It's almost a, why is the sky blue question. The answer the disciples give reflect their utter confusion. Although Jesus has already referred to himself nine times as the Son of Man, none of them has been exactly clear that Jesus is the Son of Man. So the question is confusing. Who do people say that the Son of People is? The disciples are not sure. The question is confusing, hence the answer is confused. Some people say John the Baptist or Jeremiah or a prophet. Any one of those mentioned could be considered a son of humanity. They were all people, yet they all did great things for the people. In fact, it's not all surprising that the first one mentioned is John the Baptist, because his martyrdom is still very fresh in their minds. He gave himself over for the people, so therefore he is the son of man. The question is too vague, too difficult. So the disciples are unwilling to pin themselves down with one answer. No one likes to be wrong. How often do we regret, regret the questions we don't ask? Or hate when we ask the wrong questions? I always feel bad when my patience in the car wanes, and I hear Isaiah say, after I've given quite a long sigh, I have just one more, and then I promise I'll stop asking you questions. <clears throat> Why does it exhaust me so much to answer so many questions? I think it's because I often don't have the answer. Or it seems like a ridiculous question to me, but perfectly legitimate to a five-year-old. And frankly, because Isaiah likes to talk about death a lot, I just don't want to go there. It's the struggle between knowledge and feelings. There always seems to be a disconnect between what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and what you're really asking. For instance, would your answer be different between these three questions? Who is the greatest person who ever lived? Who was the most important biblical figure? And who do you say that the Son of Man is? Now I may have set you up to answer Jesus for all three, but at any given time, we can answer the first two in very different ways. Simply because sometimes we forget that Jesus was a person, or a biblical character. We put him in this place of one so high that we worship at church we often forget that he was a living, breathing, questioning human, just like us. And because we forget, sometimes when we struggle, and when we question, we don't always ask him for the answer. You see, Jesus' question to the disciples wasn't because he forgot who he was but because he wanted them to make the connection between the friend they had right there, their buddy, and the God who created them and watched over them and sent his son to them. It's why he paid 
paints this giant stroke with the question of humanity's definition of the son of humanity. And then he narrows it down to a fine point when he asks the second question. But who do you say that I am? He couldn't draw a clearer picture than that. Son of man, I am. And Peter has possibly the best answer anyone could ever give. <laughs> not that he realizes it. But he answers not that Jesus is just Messiah, for Jesus predicted that many would be called Messiah falsely. And Jesus is not just Son of God, because Jesus is also Son of Man. But that Jesus is a part of the living God. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. God is living in and with and through Jesus in the presence of those disciples. Here is God with an answer. And the answer is Jesus. Peter will not be the rock-solid foundation of the church because he is rock-solid. No. He will be the foundation of the church because he sees God breathing and walking and talking and listening to him and to all people, even when he screws up. For Peter, God didn't end at the Old Testament. The laws and the rules that have been obeyed and harped on are shifting in the light of Jesus' grace, and Peter wants to be a part of it. He will have questions. Who wouldn't, after Jesus goes on to talk about keys and responsibilities and Hades and all of the other things that come later? But he sees in this moment who stands before him. And he knows that he can go to Jesus and to God with all of his questions. Sometimes I feel like I'm the one riding in the back of the car with all of the questions. And Jesus must just be sitting there shaking his head and rolling his eyes, holding back his laughter at my confusion, or taking deep breaths as I ask yet another question and another question. That's who I think the Son of Man is. Someone who gets as tired as I do. Who doesn't have all the answers. Who wishes that he could just hold me and promise that nothing bad would ever happen and I don't have to worry about that right now. I keep waiting for him to tell me to take a break. Stop asking so many questions. Figure out something on my own. But it hasn't happened yet. That's who Jesus, the Son of the living God, is. He doesn't get tired of our questions. Because it means we're talking to him. We're listening to him. He doesn't give us Blase answers just because we want them. He doesn't give us false promises that everything will be okay and we never have to worry in this lifetime. Instead, he gives us the true promise that everything will be whole. That someday we will never worry nor want again. Most importantly, he gives us himself. And he shows us his Father and leaves us with his Spirit. He gives the essential answer, not about himself, but about us. We too are the children of the living God. Sons and daughters of a loving and gracious and always available to us God. In all of our deep thoughts and our tough questions, he is there for us ever present, ever willing to listen, ever there for that last question. Thanks be to God. Amen.